It's been a while since I last released a video. That's because this happened. I got married. And anyone who's gotten married before it knows that they don't have a lot of free time running up to the event. Although pretty much all the planning was done by my now wife, I wanted to do something to leave my stamp on the wedding. I decided to create a project that would be displayed at the meal after the wedding. What I came up with was a colour changing glass vase. The effect of it is actually really nice. In person, the vase does a much better job at diffusing the LEDs than in the video. I made one for each table at the wedding. Rather than them working individually, I wanted to be able to control them from a central point. I wanted to be able to change the colour of them all at once and enable patterns even across multiple different tables. Because they're table centrepieces, I also needed them to be battery powered. Each light is made out of the following. The vase is a lamp from Ikea called a Grono. The LEDs are a NeoPixel ring. The ESP8266 microcontroller is controlling everything, and it's powered by two small battery banks. As weddings are already expensive, and I needed nine of these, I wanted to make them as cheaply as possible. The Grono lamp was seven euro, the ESP8266 was two euro, the NeoPixel ring was one euro, and the battery banks were three euro for both. To centrally control the lights, I'm using a Raspberry Pi 0W, and to ensure that I had a consistent network connection, I'm also using a standalone router. The Pi 0W is the latest Pi 0 that has built-in Wi-Fi. The router is perfect for this job because it's so small and it's also powered by 5 volts. I already had both of these, so they didn't really cost me anything, but in the interest of completeness, they both cost about 12 euro each. So for the 9 lamps and the Raspberry Pi and the router, it cost about 141 euro in total, which is actually really good compared to what some of the things cost us. The project is set up as follows. The router is set up as a normal Wi-Fi access point. There won't be any internet on this network, but we don't need it. The Pi and the ESP8266s will all connect to this network. The ESP8266 are running a software called Mac Lightning. The sketch is purpose-built for controlling addressable LEDs with an ESP8266. It has a built-in web interface for controlling the LEDs, but it also supports a REST API, web sockets, and even MQTT. It supports a huge range of different patterns, so I really recommend checking it out if you have an ESP8266 and NeoPixels. The software on the Pi that's communicating with the ESP8266s is called Node-RED. It's almost like having your own personal if this then that. You create flows which are a series of different sequences or events that are caused by different triggers. If you have a spare Raspberry Pi lying around, I definitely recommend checking it out. It's really configurable and easy to use. Let's take a look at what makes up each light. They're all hot glued to this marvel of 3D design. It's just an X to keep everything in the center. The ESP8266 is just plugged directly into the power bank. This also doubles as a very advanced on-off switch. The NeoPixels are wired as follows. V is plugged into 5 volts, ground to ground, and then IN is plugged into D3. As mentioned earlier, the battery is made up of two of these power banks. I needed at least 5 hours runtime, and one was only giving about 3 hours. So what I did was I separated the cells from one of the power banks and then soldered it onto the circuitry of the other power bank. You need to be really careful when you're doing this because you need to fully charge the cells so that they're matching before you start. So that means that you're soldering live circuitry and you're soldering with a big metal conductive object. Now let's take a look at installing the software for the ESP8266. Download the Mac Lightning software on the GitHub page, click clone or download, then click download zip. When it's finished downloading, extract it. In the Arduino IDE, click file and then open. Then navigate to where you downloaded the Mac Lightning sketch and extracted it. Click in through the subfolders as shown here until you get to the sketch and open it. Mac Lightning requires several libraries to be installed before it can be used. These are listed out on the project's GitHub page. Pay attention to the version numbers because there can be incompatibility if you use the wrong one. Most of these libraries can be installed through the library manager, so click sketch, include library, and then manage libraries. Search for the different libraries that you need. The first one we'll search for is Wi-Fi manager. I already had this one installed. Next we'll install the NeoPixel library. I already had an older version installed and I never updated it. This caused me problems later, which I'll show you. Finally, we'll search for WebSocket and we'll install the one by Marcus Sattler. 
For the final library we need to go back to the GitHub page and click on the link for the WS2812FX library. Download the zip of this the same as we did before. This time we don't need to extract it though, so go to sketch, include library and add .zip file. Navigate to the folder again where you downloaded it and add the WS2812FX master.zip. I now had all the required libraries installed, so I did a compile just to check that everything was working okay. I got an error around not being able to find the pub sub library. The pub sub client library is only required if you want to use MQTT, which I don't at the moment. So you can either remove this hash define from definitions.h or change it like I have here. After compiling again, I still get an error, but this time it's different. It's to do with the NeoPixel library and that the numLEDs property is private. So once more I open up my library manager, I search for NeoPixel, I select 1.1.2, the exact version that they asked for from the dropdown, and then click update. And finally, after I try compile it this time, it works okay. I made some minor modifications to the sketch. In definitions.h, I changed the pin to be D3 and the number of LEDs to be 16. I changed the host name to be ESP8266 underscore 10 because I already have 9 other ones. Inside the main Mac Lightning sketch, inside the setup method, I assigned a static IP address to each of the different lights. Node Red will be connecting to the WebSocket server on each of the ESP8266s, so it's essential that the IP address of these don't change. I also changed it so that the built-in LED was off, as you could see it through the glass phase. After you flash the sketch, your NeoPixel ring should now be blue. This means that it's enabled Wi-Fi Manager configuration mode. I've talked about Wi-Fi Manager in several videos in the past, which I'll link to below, but basically it's a software that lets you configure the Wi-Fi credentials on your ESP8266 without reflashing it. Your ESP8266 will create a new Wi-Fi network that has the same name as the host name that we set in the definitions.h. You connect to this network, and then afterwards when you open your web browser, similar to how a public Wi-Fi network works, it will redirect you to this page. You click on the configure Wi-Fi button and type in your SSID and password and click save. Your ESP8266 should then restart and connect to the network. Your ESP8266 should now be running through the default cycle, which is Rainbow. To finish setting up Mac Lightning, we need to upload the web interface. If you go to the IP address directly, you'll see you'll get a file not found page. Go to the slash upload page and then navigate to the Mac Lightning folder and then clients web and then build. Upload the two files that are in this. You'll have to manually go back to the uploaded page again. Now when you go to the IP address you'll have a new web page there. You can use this wheel to change the colour of the LEDs, or if you click modes you'll see a load of different patterns that you can select. You can also configure the brightness and then the speed of the different patterns as well. All these options and patterns are also configurable through the web API or the WebSocket server which we'll be using with Node-RED. Next we'll look at the software setup for the Pi. Node-RED comes pre-installed on Raspbian. The easiest way to install Raspbian is using the Noobs installer. I'll link to this video by Avoid Errors where they go through using the Noobs installer to set up your Pi. After Raspbian's installed, connect to the Wi-Fi network. Then launch Node-RED by clicking on the icon here. You'll also probably want Node-RED to run on startup. You can do this by typing this command into the terminal on your Pi. We should now be able to access Node-RED from any device on the same network as the Pi. Just type in the Pi's IP address with colon 1880 at the end. The first thing we need is an inject input. This allows us to pass in a payload into our flow. To find out the different commands available, we'll go back to the Mac Lightning GitHub page, then the wiki, and then the WebSocket API. Here will be a full list of commands that the WebSocket API supports. As an example, we'll set the rainbow pattern using the equals rainbow payload. So back in Node-RED, we change the payload type to string and type in equals rainbow. We can name this node anything we want. Next, we need to configure Node-RED to communicate with the ESP8266, so drag in a WebSocket node from the output section. Select Add New WebSocket Listener from the Path option and click Edit. You want to type in the IP address of your ESP8266, prefixed with WS, and then colon 81 at the end of it. Click Add. You now can name this whatever you want, but you want to be able to identify it the same as your light. You now simply connect these two nodes together and click the deploy button. 
Now when you click make rainbow, a message will be sent to light 1 equals rainbow, which will trigger the rainbow sequence. If you want to configure multiple lights, copy the first light by Control c and then Control v ing it somewhere else in the flow. Configure the WebSocket the same way as we did before with the IP address of your next light. Then you want to connect the output of the Make Rainbow trigger to the second light and click Deploy again. Now when you click Make Rainbow, the same event will be sent to the two lights at the same time, meaning their sequences will now be in sync. I know I didn't go into full detail on all aspects of the project, but hopefully there's enough there to be useful and interesting, and if you have any questions at any part, please let me know and I'll do my best to help you out. I also really recommend building one of these lamps with Mac Lightning to control it. If you drop the requirement for the battery, it's actually a really straightforward project that I think looks really good and only costs about 10 euro. Now I just need to figure out what I'm going to do with all this stuff. I've got the insides of 9 lamps and I've got the cases of 18 battery packs. I think my wife's going to kill me. Thanks for watching and see you next time.